What's up, everybody? This is Tom with Deep Video Live. Thanks for tuning in. We're on location live at the historic Halton Theater, and we are joined today by a very special guest, a man that I've been a huge fan of since probably since I was in high school at this point, the incomparable Dallas Toller Wade. Sir, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us. Oh, thanks for having me. Of course, man. Uh, so first things first, happy belated birthday, bro. Oh, thanks. Yeah, and uh, this, uh, as I understand it, this tour is celebrating your uh, simultaneously your birthday month and 10 years of Narcotic Wasteland being a working entity, yes? Yep, that's well, pretty much it. Well, congratulations on your success and on another uh, rotation around the sun, brother. Thank you. So um, having... Been, Having gone through a full decade with this band now and having a, an extensive 20, uh, 20 plus year run with Nile, uh, what in your experience is the key to longevity for a uh, for a working band? Uh, well, definitely just uh, teamwork for for one and, you know, being dependable for mm -hmm. them, just like you would for any family member, basically. Oh, yeah. And someone who's kind of on that level in general, that uh, usually really helps longevity. But you know, you also have to give everybody breaks. Absolutely. And if you let it, just like any, whether you're in entertainment industry or you're in any other kind of industry, if you're not careful, those will work you to death and burn you out. I am. So yeah. you kind of got to gauge it and just be careful with yourself, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm very glad you mentioned that because I recently went through some re real bad burnout, used to be in a couple different bands myself and, and loved it. But and we actually touched on this with our, our previous interview that burnout is a very, very real thing. And it seems like there's not the greatest, if any, infrastructure in place for a professional, like full time bands to be able to do that. Like, hey, man, I can't do this. I need to take I need to take some time off. It's like, OK, well, hope you got another gig because. Potentially, there goes that. Uh, your name is very much synonymous with this blistering, fast-paced death metal, but you're also on record saying you're a pretty big, like, thrash and punk guy. And uh, to some, that might sound surprising, but uh, now after doing a bit of a deep dive on, like, some of the, the lyrics and the, just the general approach that Narcotic Wasteland takes, I can I, I can actually see that. There's a bit of, like, challenging the status quo to its face in songs like uh, Return to the Underground, Awaken the Herd Beast, and... Uh, when your recent singles, Morality and the Wasp, there, there's this whole like, no, we're not going to do what everybody says. We're, we, we're going to do things our way. That's very, very punk rock. So thank if, you. If, if you if you wouldn't mind, I'd love to hear uh, you. I'd love to hear your two cents about that. Like how to obviously you're very good at what you do doing the death metal thing. But how does thrash and punk factor into your approach with this band? It's just one of the influences, you know, and. There's things I always liked the sort of just aggression and angst and almost domestic violence sound of the punk screaming voice. And uh, I, that's always just I've always gravitated towards that. And then, you know, on the guitar side, uh, listen to the albums like Forbidden, any of the old Forbidden stuff. I mean, that guitar playing is way it's out there oh absolutely the riffing is just incredible some of the best ever yeah that's you know, in my opinion and there's so many of that stuff in the, in the thrash like amazing guitar playing and amazing songwriting yeah and uh so there's that and then of course you know the grind core the death metal mm -hmm. there there's where the drums come in <laughs> yeah so you add a, all of this in there and that it ended up being uh narcotic wasteland that kind of those are the big ones. There's also some sort of uh, black metal stuff in there as well. Just yeah, that, that ambient like chords, uh, melodic stuff. You know, just I really don't even look at it that way. It's really more about just kind of following your heart and following your gut and following your hips. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if, if that's not punk rock, I don't know what is, man. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so it's kind of like a kind of like a marriage of all these different uh, ideals. If mm -hmm. you will. I want to ask a follow up question that tagged on to uh, celebration of your birthday. Okay. Okay. And the concept of burnout, right? So my question is, uh, for this tour, do you feel that celebrating the 50th and the 10th was a, motiv a motivating or energizing factor for going out and doing this shit again? Or do you did you feel a sense of trepidation of, oh, shit, here's a milestone. Here we go. What else is next? Like, I think it's a little bit of everything. But, you know, in a lot of ways, I already have we have this album that for various reasons have not been able to come out yet. It's definitely coming out very soon. Um, and But I'm already like three tracks into the next one. So, 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's sort of just all together, all encompassing in a way. You know, um, it's a it's a whirlwind of life, and uh, I feel very much. I, I just feel a lot stronger uh, mentally and physically than I had, you know, even ten years ago, which is kind of strange. <laughs> but I don't know. Um, so I don't know. I and I I felt like I've really made some gains on the guitar in the past few years as well. That is surprising to hear, man, because you've kind of been known to be a bit of a guitar wizard. Yeah, this is really just technique and tightness and uh, most for the most part. Like I, I have um, just ideas. If I make humming or I come across a riff or something like that. And then I don't know. It's all about uh, keeping your chops in check, too. It's very important, even if you're playing simple stuff. Yeah. Stay on top of it and, you know, it just you'll find gains and little details and stuff of what you're doing. That's just tighter, clearer. Yeah, it's the, it's like he was saying. It's actually like both of you were saying. It's kind of like the that delicate balance between the grind, staying on top of it and also knowing when to back it off a little bit because you don't want to wear yourself out. But yeah, no, that's perfect. I like it, man. And yeah. Th and thank you for that. Lately, I've, I've just felt full send for whatever reason. <laughs> I can't really explain it, but yeah, a lot of stuff is happening. I mean, um, the band is being very well received and, you know, we've been around for a while and it's starting to kind of catch on. A lot of people didn't know what the hell happened with me, <laughs> you know, after I left Niles. So, and that's fine. But, you know, you're, you're I'm out here to space. trailblaze and play some metal always, forever. That's yeah, just I how mean, it is. Yeah. When I can, while I can, you know. Nothing wrong with that, man. And I caught you guys about right before COVID at uh, the last tour you did with the, with Malignancy. Oh, enough. yeah. And that, that, was, that was a great show. That was very relieving to see, like, oh, he's still a boy still here. He's still doing the damn thing. Little detail that some people might not know about you is you're also a drummer and a fairly good one from what <laughs> I've seen. I, I, you, you strike me as a pretty humble guy. But, you know, um, as a drummer myself, this is something that I've always been curious about. If you could jam with any musician uh, as a drummer, if you could jam with any musician, metal or otherwise, living or dead, who would it be and why? Uh, I might have to modify that question a little bit. Let's let's say this. Do, do please. Uh, if you were a drummer and you wanted the gig, what would be your dream gig? If I had a dream gig as a drummer, it would be Bolt Thrower. Oh, hell yeah. That's like... I don't know. It just that's they've been one of my biggest influences for a long time. For I don't know. It was just sort of that they just hit me over the head with that one. I was like, damn, this is just brutal and thick and heavy with lots of, double, you know, mid tempo, double bass kind of thing. And that's to me yeah. some of my favorite. But yeah, that would be my my uh, my drum gig, my my dream drum gig. Yeah, I would practice every day. I promise. <laughs> and you you'd be able to get it too because it's not like their shit is easy, but it's it's straightforward and whatnot. So as long as you maintain your focus, you would be able to rock it the fuck out and have a good time with them. I'm sure. Yeah, and I started drums in the '80s, so back then you hit the drums. Huh. Yeah, yeah, you didn't have triggers and all so, that yeah. shit. So yeah, so unleashed upon mankind, I'd be using my whole leg, fucking, you know, just laying into the shit. <laughs> yeah, just get, it's like, oh man, <laughs> so, man, where do these calves come from? Damn. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, probably need a respirator. But. <laughs> Same. <laughs> I'd probably need to quit smoking. But um, I quit uh, February. At a boy, congratulations. <laughs> Good for wow, you. On tour. That is gnarly. Well, we weren't on tour actually. We, the tour just started uh, in the beginning of or the end of May actually. <laughs> The last week of May. Yeah. And to uh, to finalize your question, I I couldn't think of who on the bass or the vocals, but it would be a combination of you and Terrence Hobbs on guitar. That would be my dream gig as a as a drummer. And again, I promise I practice every day. <laughs> 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 that would be uh, that would just be unbelievable. But let, let's pivot a little bit outside of uh, the realm of metal. I'm, I'm always curious to know this about people, especially who are so mired in the metal scene as they are. What's something that's not remotely metal at all, but that you still enjoy? Not like not necessarily a guilty pleasure, but like something that's just far removed, something unexpected. I don't really honestly know. I mean, the thing that I gravitate towards no matter what is the electric guitar. Oh, yeah. So there's a wide variety of stuff there. Anything. I mean, you know, we're cruising, the, you know, to the next gig in the van or whatever, you know, uh, Joe, he really likes, he's the, the tours since 2021 has been a lots of old thin Lizzie. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Uh, David Bowie, uh, a little bit of this. I put on the John arch the other day, mm -hmm. just random stuff. 
there's there's so much more to music than metal. It's it's my favorite. Yeah, I love it till the day I die. But yeah, it's, it's like the electric guitar, though. Mostly, I mean, for me, like it kind of needs that at least to keep my interest. I'll be honest. <laughs> oh, yeah, you like what you like. That's funny. You know, the other thing is like, oh, yeah, guitar oriented. I've been getting I, a, a few nights ago, actually a few months ago, uh, me and the old lady were having a few drinks and we put on some like, sur- we just went to the surf caster rabbit hole for like mm. two hours. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> and it was just like, I love that. It was just kind of, kind of instrumental, you know, it's like the, the surf caster stuff. Yeah. yeah. And it's Dickie fun. Dale, that kind of thing. It's fun. It's got a vibe. You can, you can vibe to it. I know you guys don't necessarily only do the uh, have a commentary on hard drugs and all that stuff, but it's extremely prevalent. Just the first name in your band is narcotic. So mm-hmm. I'm curious is uh, have you or, a, or any loved ones you know, had any experience with uh, with that kind of shit? I mean, I'm, it's it's a sad reality that we all have. It's it's a scourge. Yeah, it's happened to so much of us. I mean, uh, us, our friends. Um, and that was something that I kind of needed to get off my chest. And I've had a lot of great uh, messages, you know, over the years from people that went through similar things or kind of knew where I was talking about. Because I kind of wanted to talk about it, but I didn't really want to put it out there. But Narcotic Wasteland, uh, in a lot of ways, in my opinion, while sometimes cheeky and people can take it however they want, mm-hmm. uh, it's taking all that nasty shit from reality and just putting it right there in your face. Yeah, that's and what metal does. You know, and yeah, we've all lost a lot of people from really hard stuff. And, you know, I'm, I'm still watching a lot of stuff about this fentanyl thing. Deal. I'm just so thankful that me and some of my close friends and family didn't go that far. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, although a few did, um, mm-hmm. you know, particularly uh, uh, a lady friend in my life that I had many, many years ago. She uh, lost her life to whatever the hell she was doing. She had multiple things in her system. I'm terribly sorry to hear that, brother. Um, Yeah, you know, and. I was already kind of seeing it happen around me. I'm very much an observationist. Mm-hmm. And even before it hit me right in the teeth, it was it was happening all around me and I could see it. And that's where Keeping Up With The Jones came from. Mm-hmm. I was seeing, I wasn't seeing this, uh, this struggle to get the better car or the better swimming pool anymore out of our even if we ha- we don't really have a middle class anymore, do we? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, before we get all crazy on that shit, <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll it. just shut that one right there. But you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. It, instead of it being something like that, it was everybody was just, you know, mowing extra lawns and stuff so they can get more pills. Mm-hmm. And it was just something that I just saw it happening in my neighborhood. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be a fairly decent neighborhood, even, you know. Oh, that's and, where it's the uh, worst, you know, bro. I. Uh, Math lab exploding, all that stuff that I talked about in the first song. That actually, a lot of that shit actually happened. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you know, that was very frustrating for me, I, I <laughs> to say imagine. the least, and had to uh, do something with it. And I figured, express that. I figured there were other people that were going through similar things. Uh, and it was something uh, in, in human behavior and, and uh, pr- particularly criminal psychology and forensic files and all that shit too has been huge in my life in the past 15, 20 years. Just, you know, just studying human behavior and watching us constantly fuck it up. <laughs> just, just seeing and al- almost admiring the depths to which people can fall. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. I mean, and then I, and at the same time, you can see yourself. I mean, I've had bouts with this over the years for sure. I'm not even going to lie. Uh, but I mean, even with this, you know, you can really go too far. Absolutely. Like I've I've been, I've been very fortunate that I seem to have an off switch. You know, like I I personally have never really lost control too much, but, uh, I've seen it happen to plenty of people, family members and friends. It's, it's the real deal, man. It's, it's no joke. So what it, it, not like we're going to solve the problem, but (laughs) is the, in, in your mind, is there any sort of like antidote to it or any sort of like firewall that you can put your put up to yourself because it really seems to boil down to like individual strength of character that seems to be like the only real bulwark we have against this shit yeah i mean it depends on the individual and how their you know things affect them too like we're all different that way so some people just party too much and because they're just having too much fun (laughs) yeah yeah. or they have people that are kind of using something like this to you know, curb something they don't want to think about. And that's where we all run into an issue <laughs> at one point or another. It happens to almost everybody. 
everybody faces you know. temptation. But, yeah. yeah, or just, you know, using something to sort of numb yourself from a situation you don't want to think about. Yeah, escapism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it could be something very tragic. So we have to think about it. Not everybody just gets into this and becomes an alcoholic because they're an asshole. Yeah. No, there's some very nice people that just, you know, they had a lot of they had a lot of traumatic shit going on in their lives, and this was a way for them to just kind of unwind a little bit. And, you know, hey, it's it's hard not to sympathize with those kinds. Some people just have addictive personalities. Some people are just assholes. Where, uh, where exactly from the uh, Carolinas are you from? I'm originally from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Right on. So let's talk barbecue. <laughs> oh, man. Well, uh, just to let you a little in on my dad, yeah, Gene Wade, he was a hog farmer. All right. And he could prepare just about any part of a pig. And we used to have this thing called pig pickings. You ever heard of that? Ooh, no, but it sounds good. Yeah. That's the Carolina thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we'd have it all out there. Pulled pork, cold Budweiser. Didn't matter what age you were. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I fucking sound like him right now. Uh, we we tend to become our parents as much. As <laughs> yeah, much as I love them. I love both of them. Yeah, yeah right on. And so, uh, you, I mean, you're a pretty well traveled guy. Which uh, you have any uh, favorites, or do you kind of just defer to the hometown? Like, you, if you're like, man, I want some barbecue. You want to go for Carolina barbecue or? Does it matter? Oh, man, I don't discriminate. Same thing with uh, one time I was on the hunt for the best shrimp and grits. Mm -hmm. And what I found was a lot of killer varieties on the same dish. Mm -hmm. Whether they actually take like just a whole thing of grits, a big old ball of it, and just throw it in the deep fryer for a minute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> with a nice sauce and the, and the shrimp on there. Or you have, uh, you know, more of a sort of just shrimp and grits. <laughs> yeah. You know, more of a basic style one. There's been a lot of takes on it, so yeah, I'm, I'm always on the search for the best. I, I bet you can get some real good shit down in Louisiana, like down on the bayou. Oh, yeah. I, I need to make it out there. I haven't been there yet, but I, I fully intend to. Carolina coast, too. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, I've only driven through uh, Carolina like on on family trips. Never spent any extended amount of time there, but I really should. It's very, very picturesque. Well, it's the variety vacation land. That's what they taught us in school anyways. And it's because you have the beach and the mountains. Yes, exactly. That's like one of the only the places like in the country we can six get hours of each other. Yeah, that's it, that. That really is a destination thing. I hadn't really thought of it that it's way. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's a it's a beautiful place. The I've all, I love the landscape around even Fayetteville and Eastover, which was a town a little bit over to the side. That whole part of the world is just really beautiful. Yeah, uh, lots of loblolly pine. That's the state tree. So. Oh yeah, well I'm I'm a Jersey boy. We got pine, we got pine forests. Oh yeah, you're on the East Coast. You're East Coast. You know the deal. Mm-hmm. But uh, so actually that transitions into an, a, a pretty good into a, a fairly regular question we have with uh, some of our guests. Uh, you, you already kind of touched on it. What, what's something about the area you're from that that you love? Maybe even something that like off the beaten path that uh, outsiders might not know about, but you love. And conversely, what's something that's like, ah, this kind of sucks. <laughs> well, the thing with uh, particularly South Carolina right now mm -hmm. is it's overpopulated. It didn't, it wasn't when I moved there 25 years ago, mm -hmm. but for me, it is there. So I've got my sight set North. All right. I'm going to be, I'm, I'm pretty much relocated, but I've been in the process of kind of relocating. <laughs> you're, north. you're also on a nationwide tour. So you kind of have priorities. Oh yeah. Well, right now I'm on tour, but I'm saying just in general, where <laughs> like where I'm going to be living. Oh, right. Yeah, I'm going to be sort of relocating out of there, but that's one of the unfortunate things. Other than that, I couldn't say anything bad about the Carolinas. If you ever go to Greenville, South Carolina, Go down to Falls Park, mm -hmm. go to the waterfall, go to the, do the town, do the restaurants, all that stuff. It's amazing. I have a friend who just recently moved to Greenville. Shout, <laughs> shout, shout out, Eric. Love you, buddy. Miss you. Yeah, it's hell of, it's overpopulated. That's my only complaint with it. And that's the why I'm getting out because I just, I don't like all those people up in my grill all the time. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, I mean, I, I can, I can I'm understand. I'm going to be moving that. a little bit out, you know, of the city. Hey, you want some space. There's nothing wrong with that. And I imagine I still want the amenities of the city, but oh, I just yeah. don't want to live all up in that. You know, it's, just, it's, just, it's getting too busy over there. Yeah, we've heard that about a, a couple of different places, including here in the DFW Metroplex. So you got people like me who are like, hey, this place is pretty cool. There's some new road development, I noticed. Oh, there, when is there not? You guys it's... got a band. Have you ever been to Atlanta? They have this place called Spaghetti Junction. I think they even mentioned it. it in The Walking Dead. Uh, man, that is one hell of a spaghetti junction you got going on with all those bridges going. Mm -hmm. 
I was like, holy shit. This is overpass on overpass on overpass on overpass. I still want to go storm chasing. I haven't done it yet. I have dreams about them all the time. You and my dad should talk. He, he's always wanted to do that. He never got to. <laughs> we'll have to get together and do it. Oh, yeah. yeah we, can have, we can get it together over barbecue. Joe, the doors are actually going to be opening soon, and I don't want to miss any of these bands because this whole lineup cool. is stacked yeah. tonight. Nothing but bruisers. So what's the worst show that you think you've ever played? Something that's like, oh, Christ. Um, Everybody's got horror stories. I, it's really hard to say because when it happens, you just try to get through it and you move on. Well, there was one time in particular where I think we were in L.A., and this was early Nile. Mm -hmm. And uh, for some reason or another, it took forever to get all the sound right. And we only got to play like three songs for our first time at the whiskey. Uh, oh, at the whiskey, too. Yeah. Oh, man. You I was were pissed. Looking forward to that. <laughs> I was hella pissed. I was like, really? Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, but that sort of thing happens. It's, it's not anything. Well, you get upset about it at the moment, but you just kind of move. It's like, whatever. Yeah. It happens. It's not, especially if it's not your fault. <laughs> no, exactly. It's, you can only control so That's much. like the most annoying thing yet this later on. You're just like, yeah, it wasn't my fault. <laughs> yeah. A consummate professional. You love to see it. And uh, la last one, and then we'll uh, we'll get out of here and enjoy this show. Cool. And you touched on this earlier. You put out five singles, all of them badass, over the last two years or so. Mm -hmm. uh, just recently, uh, the most recent one is Barbarian from a couple weeks ago. Killer tune. So what's up with the new album, man? When's uh, it's coming out this year? This uh, year, I'm hope yeah, definitely this year, 100. Um, there's quite a few more songs as well, so mm -hmm. I'm really excited about it. I re I really kind of hated how everything worked out the way it did, but at least I was able to put some songs out. Yeah, um, and there it is, and I'm already three tracks into the next one, and I'm really excited with the response we've been getting from the last two. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sex, Lies, DNA, and Barbarian, which actually we we're recording footage for the video on this tour. We already got all the performance stuff mm. uh, before we left uh, San Francisco. So all that's recorded. So we're adding more footage to it. And there'll actually be a video for the song as well. Oh, excellent. Yeah, man. Got a few concepts and ideas for that. So that's going to be great. Looking bring it to the screen. Why not? Yeah. Why, why the hell not, man? Yeah. I'm really looking forward to it, man. Well, once again, Dallas, thank you very much for your time and happy birthday, brother. Oh, thank you. Cheers. Thanks oh, yeah. for the beer. <laughs> Speaking of which, I did forget to mention, at least on camera, he's on tour for his birthday month. Tonight is the start of my birthday weekend. My birthday is on is on Monday, so and I got the next uh, I got Thursday and Monday off, and I was like, why not? Still, why not kick it all off with a badass show and get the happy birthday, man! Thank you, brother. Let's raise some hell tonight. Right, let's get to it. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys like what you see? Be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for tuning in. This is Tom and Dallas Toller Wade with Deep Video Live. <laughs> See you guys next time.